morning. Welcome to CUNA's Advocacy Update for April 20th, 2020. I'm Ryan Donovan, CUNA's Chief Advocacy Officer. Here are three things that you need to know this week about credit union advocacy. First, Congress is poised to add additional funding to the Paycheck Protection Program. CUNA has outlined its top priorities for the Phase 4 stimulus and recovery legislation. And the Removing Barriers blog and the CUNA Compliance Community are great places to find more information about recently issued guidance and regulatory changes. Let's start with the Paycheck Protection Program. Congress is poised this week to add as much as $300 billion to the Paycheck Protection Program in legislation that could set aside a portion of the money to be loaned by community lenders. On Friday, CUNO and the leagues launched a grassroots action alert to Congress supporting new funding for this program. And on Sunday, we sent a letter to Congress urging the appropriation of as much funding as possible and supporting a set aside so long as it didn't slow down the delivery of funds to the program or complicate small lender participation in the program. Representatives Fred Upton of Michigan and Josh Gottheimer of New Jersey are organizing a congressional sign-on letter with the same message as the CUNA letter. We've also been working to get improvements to the fund, including possibly the ability of small lenders to borrow from the fund, the same as small businesses do. The policy changes aren't expected in the stopgap legislation, but it could be on the table in the phase four legislation Congress is expected to consider next month. Speaking of phase four, many in Congress are already working on the framework for the next round of stimulus and recovery legislation. That's why last week we sent letters to Congress commenting on provisions in a draft bill that was proposed by House Financial Services Committee Chairwoman Maxine Waters we also outlined our concerns and our priorities for the next round. We told Chairman Wa Chairwoman Waters that we support her proposals to increase funding for Treasury's Community Development Financial Institution Fund, to extend the GSE Qualified Mortgage Patch, and to direct the Federal Reserve to provide 0% interest rate loans to community financial institutions to ensure that they can continue to serve their communities and staff members. But we also outlined concerns that we have with provisions in her legislation that would prohibit overdraft and debt collection processes. As CUNA believes a broad ban on such services, even during this time, would ultimately impact the affordability of products and services. In addition, we put on the table additional policy proposals, including eliminating either permanently or temporarily the six transfer per month limit under Regulation D fixing the issues with the Paycheck Protection Program, such as the two-year loan term and, uh, and the issue related to lenders being borrowers. We called for Congress to enact legislation that exempts credit union business loans made during federally declared disasters and emergencies from the credit union member business lending cap. We called for enacting a new federal law permitting remote notarization, delaying the current expected credit loss standard implementation until January 2024, extending the expanded central liquidity facility through at least 2021, and providing an emergency effusion of $3 million to NCUA's Community Development Revolving Loan Fund. On Friday, Representative Brad Sherman introduced bipartisan legislation that would exempt credit union member business loans made during and for three years after the COVID-19 pandemic from the member business lending cap, and we strongly support that legislation. We expect the phase four legislation to take firmer shape after Congress re-ups the Paycheck Protection Program later this week, and we'll be actively engaged in its development and its progress. Congress doesn't have a monopoly on all the action here in Washington. Regulators, including the CFPB, NCUA, the Department of Labor, and others are making changes to regulation in response to the crisis and to help credit and serve their members. There are regulatory changes and, and new guidance coming out just about every day. And just last week, NCUA put out a new regulation on the CLF. They finalized the appraisal rule. They made additional accommodations regarding appraisals during the crisis, and they provided 
other regulatory relief. NCUA also sent out a risk alert regarding cybersecurity and work from home. The CFPB issued a policy statement on remittances and they also finalized their HUMDA reporting thresholds. The CFPB also released some consumer focused research that might be helpful to credit union members. And the Department of Labor issued guidance on the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. We've got a lot of information on these issues in this ad in the written advocacy update, uh, but to stay on top of these and other changes, I encourage you to monitor both the Removing Barriers blog and the CUNA Compliance Committee, which you can access on CUNA's website. Finally, the CUNA League COVID-19 survey remains open. This is an important tool that helps us tell the credit union story on Capitol Hill and with other policymakers. If you haven't done so already, please fill out the survey. It just takes a couple of minutes. And if you've already filled it out, maybe you did it a couple of weeks ago, uh, but you have new or you know, updated information, please fill it out again. We'll take care of keeping the data clean. I hope this update is helpful. If you have any questions or concerns during the week, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thanks for spending some time with me and have a great week.